Today is July the 6th, 2011, and we are at the home of Graham and Mary Catherine Babylon. And Graham, we're going to start with you and ask who your parents were and where you were born and a little something about growing up in the area of New Windsor. Uh -huh. Okay, I was born on the, here on the same farm. It was a house across the railroad track. I was born in, in 1918. I went to school in New Windsor, New Windsor. In 1936, I went in the Navy for four years. My brother was in the Navy. He went in the Navy in 1933. And who, what were your parents' names and your brother's name? Well, my, my father's name was Guy W. Babylon, and my mother's name was Sarah Louise Babylon. She was a Graham. Okay. Originally, it was a Graham. And your brother? How many My children? Brother, How many children in your family? There was four. There was four in our family. One, two boys and two girls. The girl, the boy was the oldest, and the boy was the youngest, and the two girls were the were in between. And. Uh, and you went to school in New Windsor. Was that a one-room school? No, originally my brother and sisters went to Medford School and I can't remember whether that was closed or what. But anyway, we all started in New Windsor and I started in the first grade in New Windsor. And, and, and uh, the building, um, there was a brick, There now. was a brick building there and I went through, that used to have seven grades in there, but now they, they, when I was there, they only had six grades, and we had the seventh grade, uh, we, was underneath the gymnasium of Blue Ridge College. And uh, the other words, the high school was, a Blue Ridge, was in Blue Ridge College. In other words, the, the college wasn't doing much, and the county rented that from the Rented the buildings or the rooms from the count from the uh, from the Blue Ridge College. Blue Ridge College, and uh, that was where we went to high school. And then in 1933, my brother went in the Navy, because back in those days, if you had a nickel, you were a rich man. And I remember going out setting traps and I would catch a skunk and we would sell that skunk maybe for a dollar and a quarter. My gosh, then we were rich. And then in 36 I went in the Navy and my dad, but my dad started the business in 1930 and we weren't doing anything and I, I stayed, I came out after my enlistment was up, but my brother stayed in. And he later was killed in action. And he went down with the ship. But we were in together, and I came home and helped Dad on the farm and in the vault business. What and year did you start the vault business, your dad? Dad started the vault business in 1930. As I said, we made the first vault under, in the cellar of the house up here, and we painted it all up, perched it out of the house, put it on a, on a sled, they called it a dung sled, hooked the horses to it, got his mother up, out of bed and perched her to the wheel, with a wheeling chair up to the window so she could see the vault, and that was the first vault that we put in. The first vault we made went into my, my, my grandmother's house. <coughs> and then we weren't doing much. And I, and I, I wasn't going to college. My brother had a scholarship to Western Maryland and we didn't have money enough 
to send him to go on on to, to college. In other words, just go from here to here to Westminster. That was that was a lot of money, and uh, he had to give up his scholarship. Then he went in the navy, and then. Three years later, after I came out of high school, I went in the Navy. And then, when I came out, I helped Dad with the farm and in the business. Then I came to, uh, then we moved, I got married, and we moved down, I built down here. And I had been here ever since. And then you started the septic tank business. And then we started, we started the septic tank business. You started out with a vault business and expanded it to do septic tanks. Yeah. So, and when did you build all this concrete making equipment down here? That was the year, in other words, Donna came home from the hospital, but Donna was just born, and that was the first day we moved in here. But th that was in 1955, and that was when we started working here. Okay, so this property was off the original farm track. Oh, yeah. How many acres were in the original farm track? 208 acres. Wow. Oh, that includes that farm over there. Oh, across the two road. farms, yeah. Well, we, uh, you it's, see, my grandmother and I, they divided the farm, and we took the railroad as the borderline, and then we took that side, and then this, this little six acre piece. And he had, and his other brother took the other part. And uh, then I got married in 1953, and Donna was born in 55, and our son was born in 50, 56. 56. And then here we are. Okay, what was the economy like when you moved into this house and the business? Was the business taking off and flourishing? Well, the business was taking off then. was doing fairly good at that time, for that time of the, that time of the time. Because then we couldn't have built this house. If we wouldn't have, just a minute, please. There's that. You can look at it over. And that's uh, what you got tomorrow. Okay, and then. Uh, okay. And then when you started the septic tank business, then things start picking up. Pardon? The septic tank business start picking up right then and why? Well, now the septic tank business, well, that has dropped off with the economy today. That has dropped off tremendously. Because building is really building is, is way way down, and then and the vault business cremation has come along and that has hurt our vault business. In other words, the cost of funerals. Well, my mother, my dad, and my mother was around four or five hundred dollars, or something like that to, to bury them. Today, it's getting ten thousand dollars. Yeah. And that is why, and I think that, that is why cremations, although the people in cremations say that eventually they're going to be as high as a regular funeral. What was the cost of a septic tank back in 1955 versus the cost of making a septic tank today in 2011? I don't, I can't remember what the cost was. But well, I'd say around a hundred dollars then, and today it costs it it a hundred dollars a day for a yard of concrete. Graham, but the we started out with five hundred gallon tanks, yeah, and started. now the most popular is two thousand. See, the um, uh, regulations of the health department has changed that business uh. also. I'll establish that you're here. <laughs> yeah, I think we need to move her around. Oh, uh, well, well, I was just yeah. doing a little extra. Okay, and Mary Catherine, uh, what was your maiden name? Warner. 
Warner. Uh -huh. And um, what were your parents' names? Uh, my father's name was Raymond, and my mother's name was Catherine. And you were born up On in? a farm house uh, between uh, Manchester and Lineboro. And then my father uh, uh, purchased the uh, feed business in Lineboro, and we moved there. And I was, there's a little controversy there. They say he started in 32, and my aunt told me that we moved there when I was a year and a half. So, so I'm not quite sure. And so that's where I'm. Um, Did you go to school in that area? Manchester. In Manchester. I graduated from Manchester. And um, of course then it was all one school, like New Windsor. Built just like New Windsor School. Uh, the same, um, at that time they used the same um, uh, contract, or the architecture. Mm -hmm. And um, the part of my high school now was torn down. And um, it's all elementary now, I guess. And then North Carolina Middle School and all that. And how did you and Graham meet? Well, do we have to go into that? <laughs> <laughs> um, through a mutual friend. Okay. Um, I was working at the health department and she, I guess, was working for the Carroll County Times. And uh, Graham had heard about me through uh, one of his girlfriends, uh, and that uh, my friend practiced hold under. Um, and whatever made him say to Arlene, do you know a nurse that works at the health department. And Graham said, oh. and Arnie said, oh yeah, and went to school with her. He says, well, I want to meet her. So that went on for a couple months. I said, I wasn't interested. And um, meeting him. And we were at the BFW in Nanowar. And um, I was talking to Arlene, and I saw this man on the dance floor, and I said, is that who you want me to meet? And she said, uh-huh. And I said, that old man? And so, anyway, he came over to the table, and Arlene introduced me to him, and uh, we got to talking, and he had asked me for a date, and I told him I was busy. And so this went on for a couple months. But then he invited me to a real nice dance in Baltimore. And I thought, hmm, sounds good. And no, before that, he asked me to go to a basketball game, uh, the Bullets. And I oh, I never saw pro basketball game. Why not? It was a double date with Arlene. She made, he made Arlene come to the door to get me. Because we were practically strangers. And so we went to the basketball game. And the dance, that's January. And the dance was in February. And I thought, hmm, this sounds good. And one thing went to it that led to another. So after high school, you got a nursing degree? Uh, yes, I went to University of Maryland, and I graduated University of Maryland uh, School of Nursing in 49. And uh, I uh, worked at the hospital uh, for hmm, a year. And uh, the head of the health department called me and offered me a job at the health department. and. Uh, it made more money, uh, and uh, I could live at home, and free, and um, Daddy would buy me a car. And all that sounded pretty good. So um, I started working at the health department, I guess, in 1950, and um, worked there for 
five years, and then when we got married, I became active in the, the business with Graham. Okay. And so, then the kids came. So you, you two of you married, mm -hmm. which I'm sure was a big help. Yeah, and it was not a big transaction for me because uh, I grew up in a small family business, and uh, I understood all the problems that went along with handling it. Uh, and you did the bookkeeping? Uh, no, no. No. Okay. And did everything. Oh, okay. Uh, I mainly uh, answered the phone. Uh, of course, he'd go out funerals. But in those days, he worked seven, seven days a week when we got married. And because um, we, we had quite a few Sunday funerals. And the kid, children were getting older, and uh, we had to swim the pool. And we would be out there, and Daddy was working. And, and I said to him, uh, I thought maybe it was time he worked six days a week. So he did. Like in those days, you worked to give the men off. Because those days you didn't even pay a man o overtime work. <laughs> and you take Saturdays and Sundays. That was, uh, I, was, I was the busiest on Saturdays and Sundays and holidays. Tell me about the railroad track that uh, comes through your property. This is Wakefield Valley Road. Was there ever a little station or a yeah, platform here? there was here? a post office. There was a post office up here, and there was there was three tracks here. The one was a side track. I think it was the longest side track between Baltimore and Hagerstown. And you see, a freight train would come in there because they couldn't pass on the on the train. And then there was a side switch there. At in other words, we shipped milk out of that. We shipped the milk out, uh, our milk, we put it in five gallon cans, five or seven gallon cans, and we would put it over on the car, and then that night they would come back and bring the, the uh, key, the chains, the uh, cans off, and then the next day when the men come here to, when the farmers come here with their milk, they would pick up the cans and take back home, and then. That way there they'd have, have cans, and then they took the railroad off, they took the, the rail, that rail train off, and then we had to ship milk by, by a truck. And uh, I know we had some cousins in Baltimore that would come up by the train and they would get a ticket to Wakefield, and then for the evening when they went back, we would get up and flag the train down. They would get on the train and go back to Baltimore. They, they had a regular stand up here. What's that? Um, you know, a milk stand where they would unload the milk. Well, that was that was originally a freight stand. Well, yeah. 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 They even had a uh, on the stand. They had two stands there, and one stand was they had a, a little compartment off. If you wanted to ship a calf off, well, you could ship the calf off there. So they ran cattle um, uh, cars on the train as well as other other cars. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Was but it was a freight train and a passenger train. They were different. Well, they had the passenger train with the one they called the fast mail. That would be be in the morning and in the evening. That would go through with the mail, and that would drop the mail off at Westminster and Union, the Windsor and Union Bridge. And I think that they also dropped it off at what, down here at at uh, Medford uh, Station, Medford. Medford. See, at, at the Medford Grocery, had a post office there. I understand that was like a little shopping mall at one time. Yeah, there would be people come there back in the in the Depression years, and they would buy a hundred dollars worth of stuff at one time, and he would buy the ba and Mr. Bale Bale run it. 
and he would buy, say, a case, a carload of peanuts, and he would a sell railroad them very, car, a railroad car full yeah. of peanuts, and he he would buy, he'd sell the peanuts in for nothing, for practically nothing, to get the people to come in, and he would sell his stuff be, be so much cheaper than what to, what you could buy other places because he. He bought in volumes. Could you get clothes there? What's that? Did he sell clothing also? No, he never sold clothing. They went into the butcher business. They sold feed. He sold feed and that stuff down, down there. And then he had to, that was in one building. And the other building, he had to, the grocery store then in another building, he sold fertilizer, <laughs> made fertilizer out of So these buildings were separate. They weren't connected in any way. No. That was a Medford, Medford grocery. Medford uh, there on that. And then when he died, when David Bale died, well, eventually the business went out of business. He was still in existence in 50, uh, because I remember Marty took me there, and that was quite an experience, and, but uh, I don't remember. I don't remember, today. I don't remember when it went out of business, and now they're in the building up there, and right across the street from the stores, he had an apartment house there, and that's where some of his workers, workers lived in that apartment house. And then the school was there too, now I think the school is down. And that, and, is that, that, is the school still there uh, across 31? Isn't that what? the school, that building on the left? Oh, across from where we're That looks down. like a church. Yeah, isn't that the was school? It, was the school there where, across from Mount and Bell there, was that uh, concrete uh, block? No, that was a brick building set on top of the hill. You remember where, where Cy Leister lived? Yeah. That was it. There was Cy Leister here, yeah, right and he, 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 up here was the, was, the, uh, was the old school. On Nicodemus Road? What's that? On Nicodemus Road? No, it was right there, right there in Medford. Oh. In other words, there was a school up here at the Brick Church. That, old, that was the school where Dad went to school oh, there. Oh, yeah. At the old yeah, brick, church. brick church, right? That was the school. That was, that was a, now the I don't remember a store. I don't remember it being a being a uh, a school or anything like that. But I know that Dad went. There you go. Yeah. All right. When I when I started the school in the first grade, we walked up to, across the fields up to the thirty one, and then we walked in there like that. And we didn't have a school bus. In fact, John Hyde, who had to run the quarries over here, he had, his children was going in there to school, and they got so that they were working. And he got a car, and he they were going in there and that. And then he started taking the other kids over there and on the school bus, on a bus. And then I don't know how it was, uh, the way the county started got the bus or did something, and they gave him a route to go by. I know he went to, uh, to down to Medford and picked up there, and they never came up here until a couple years later after they were and anyway, then they'd come up to the railroad track and turn around. Then eventually they went clear on up top of the hill, top of the, about a mile up the road there. And there they turned around there. Then they got all the people from up around there and they come down and then we went to New, and to New Windsor. Then we went to New Windsor, in other words, it went to the elementary school and the high school. What grade was that? Do you remember? What's that? What grade? When it started? What grade were you in? 
Well, I would say, now I can't remember this for sure. I would say it was around about the seventh, eighth grade in high in school that the school bus came up here, came up here. I know that Monty and Monty Hyde and George were in the same were in the same class, and that was when I think, if I remember correctly, that was when Hyde had money to drive these cars in and started to carrying them over here. And I claim, I was myself proclaiming this, that John Hyde started the school bus system in Carroll County. Now, whether that's right, I don't know. Apparently made a nice format for all of that. But walking from here into New Windsor as a little first grader, that was a, a hard trek. Oh yeah. And in bad weather. But you weather. see, I, I was with the others, the other people too. Did you? That go to, wasn't too bad. You didn't go to the railroad track. What's that? You didn't. We walked. We walked railroad track up to the bridge. Then we walked across the field, diagonally across the field, up over the hill to to hit. In other words, we cut. We do. We do some cutting off. But then we had a special path. We had a path up through there that we walked up through the field. Probably around Sling of Road. Yes. It's where they probably cut up. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people can't understand that we went to that we walked to school. Back in those days, that was the way you got to school. Got to school. And then you see, by their high school, we had their, the uh, college gymnasium. That was where we played basketball. That's called the Blue Ridge Building at the Brethren Service Center now. Yeah, then it was sold. The Blue Ridge College eventually went broke. And after the school moved away and the school built a new building, I think that the the new school was put in about 1936, around that time. Right. And I couldn't say for sure, but when the high school moved down to there, then that left the, the school and, and, the, and the college, they had no room there then. They had that, and that ended, the, that ended Blue Ridge College. And then Blue Ridge m moved to Bridgewater, Virginia, and the Church of the Brethren had obtained the college campus and turned it into a World Relief Center I know, about 1944. I know one of the football players who was coach at Penn State, Rip Engel, went two years up to Blue Ridge College to play football. And he went from there to Western Maryland and and Western Maryland was an eighth place team in the country. Then Dick Harlow had that. That was back in the 30s. Where did you go as a family to do most of your shopping for clothing? Out in Westminster. Star, it was, it was called Star Gossage, Star and Gossage. I think that was the name, Star Gossage and Little or something like that, eventually what it was. That had, that had men's clothing. And Newsbaum and Jordan was the women's, that was the women's store. And T.W. Mathers was a, was a women's store. So you had three selections over there. That's good. They were all on Main Street? Yeah, they were on Main Street. Well, Star Gosh's and Little was just, was uh, about 12 foot wide and that went back there and that was it, that was it, that. But now Newsbaum and Jordan, that was a, a pretty big store. And uh, T.W. Mathers, you know, that was a big store. And then there was a, uh, uh, I don't, can't remember what car it was and what the name of it was, Frank but there was a garage there. Uh, there was a garage right on Main Street, right next to Newsbaum and Jordan, and the railroad track, and then there was a, a grocery store 
between, in other words, next to a grocery store, and you pulled your car in the back end of that, and that's where they'd do the work. And I think he sold Hupmobiles. Never heard of it. I, I can't remember what it was, but I think it, that was the start. Okay, did you go into New Windsor for any supplies? Like well, hardware Windsor, or meat or? Well, now and then we'd go in, the, we'd see back in those days, we killed a beef ourselves. We butchered around about eight hogs. And uh, they, uh, in other words, what meat we had, maybe we would go to New Windsor. At, at, there was a couple meat stores in New Windsor. And I, I knew that, but groceries, we aren't ever but went in there for groceries. Where'd you get your groceries? What's that? Where'd you get your groceries? At Westminster, oh. the A&P store. Yeah. That was Saturday, that was a Saturday night haul. And now you guys they'd go to Saturday night. I know they'd give us, we kids, I know I would get, they'd give me 25 cents. I would go to the movies and I'd pay 15 cents to come out and get a hot dog, a Coney Island hot dog for 10 cents. And then mother's brother, he would get out early and get a place on Main Street to park. So as you could sit in the car and watch the people walk up and down the street. <laughs> and that was funny. Everybody was on one side of the street and nobody walked on the other side. Saturday night entertainment. Where was the movie theater at? In, What's that? Where was the movie theater in Westminster? Mm, three. Well, there, three. Was a, there was a movie theater, well, at the corner of John Street there was a building there, that was a, a Murphy's or something like that there. And, and then there was Davis, Davis Automobile was there. Then there was the State Theater State. right next to it. And then they, they built the, uh, in, the in, in the 30s, they built a new, a new movie theater. And then they run the two there and then they had one down at the railroad track. That was called the Romana. I think that was the name of it. Anyway, that would have a movie too. So then they would have, there were three movies going on at the same time. But at one time they had a movie theater in New Windsor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. did New you Windsor ever go New to Windsor, the... New Windsor had a movie theater in, in there. And... Uh, was that at the hardware store? Yeah, no. Next to the bank. Next to the bank, where it got torn down. Well, oh, well, it, was, it was been torn out. It's where the parking lot is mm -hmm. on the bank. And he would walk, and the man that had that, and the next week coming up, he'd walk up and down the uh, aisle, in the center aisle, and he would uh, holler out what, what the movies were the next week. And there were solid movies, and what's your name, Peggy? Well, they started out in solid, and then they came on to voice. But tell me who played the piano. What's that? And uh, um, what's her name played the piano? Um, Till Bullock yeah. played the piano. Who? Till Bullock. Bullock. Uh, Till Bullock, she was, she was a, a music teacher in Carroll County. Okay. And then she married uh, Spencer. Mm. Well, whatever. That makes any difference. Well, um, uh, she married a fella, and anyway, he was in the Army got in the army in the war, and she ended up in uh, Arizona. That's where he was. But back when they did the silent movies, they had music, yeah. and, and normally it was live music. Somebody okay. playing a piano yeah, or she, an organ. Yeah, yeah. yeah then she was, was the one that did it. Yeah. Well, I can't remember much about the silent movies. I know that the, I, I remember going to the silent movies. But then they came along with the talking movies, and I remember Al Jolson was the first one in that, and that was the jazz singer. Al, he, Al that came on, and uh, at first the, it wasn't too successful for the, for the voice singing, for the uh, talking movies. I think that they had 
on the silent movies, they had it down below the right and the, the captions. Uh, uh, uh. Daddy, talk about the mail delivery. How What's you got, that? How you got mail? Like you remember the the uh, the guy in the sleigh that would come in the snow and give you mail? Oh yeah, that was the mail carrier. See, the mail carrier would come, and he had a he had a horse and a buggy that he'd use in bad days when he couldn't, when the, half the roads were, were mud. Well, he couldn't get through the, in the car, and he'd have a horse and buggy, and he had it all fixed up, the glass in front, how it was, how he would uh, deliver the mail out like that. And he did that for a couple years. Oh, he also had a car? Oh yeah, he had a car too. Do you remember getting your first car? The first car? I, my first car was just before I went in the Navy. But what about your family's first car? Uh, I can't remember, I can't remember the first car, but I can remember having an old, well they had a Sudi Baker at one time, and then they had an old Columbia, then they got smart and they got rich and all of a sudden they bought a gold 29 Ford. Four do, four, uh, two door, a uh, two door, then they didn't have four doors. Then they came out with a two door and uh, we got that and that we kept that. I wish they'd have kept it longer. I wish they would never have sold it. Um, was that before the depression? During, yeah. And during the Depression. Well, well 29, see, 29 wasn't the Depression. That was the starting of the Depression. That was when the starch stops started coming down. Do you want to talk about um, how we lost the farm and got it back? Oh, yeah. You want to talk about how we lost the farm in the Depression and got it back? Oh, yeah. Well, you see, Dad, was he invested in a lot of stock. And he borrowed money for that, and then the uh, stocks went down, and he lost everything, and we lost our home and everything. And you see, they couldn't take the business because my brother and my name was on it, and we were miners, and they couldn't they couldn't sell the business. Incorporated. And uh, it wasn't incorporated. No. It was just. It was got to be Babbin and Sons, but we were part owners. See, George and I was part owners, oh, yeah. according to the papers. And that was that, that part of it in the, in, the, uh, in the Depression. So where did you live when you lost your home? Right up at the same place. Oh, you still Yeah, it was no. just being put up, and then neighbors. Tell them how you, you well, neighbors went together a, and a, bought it. A got friend it. of dad's at New Windsor that was on the bank directors. And he says, man, we got to help a guy have it now. So they lent him the money. In other words, that farmer, that farm cost him $3,300. But that was a lot of money back then. Yeah, and then you see what happened also. We built a barn up there on it, and a year later that barn was on the ground. It caught fire and went, went on the ground. We put the money in the Central Trust Company in Union Bridge, and the next day the, the bank closed its doors. And we lost all the it, it, uh, all that money. That, that was back in, in the Depression, I yeah. mean. It was bad, bad back then. Is that when the bank stepped in, or? That was no, the bank. That, the bank didn't step in. We did In other words, it was a week before the sale, before the bank, anybody in the bank, said that we could buy the home back. But the bet what you meant, bet when the barn burned down, I guess insurance paid for that. Right? Well, that was what I'm saying. When they did, Dad took the check and put it into the, into the check that we got from the insurance company in the. Ah. In the bank in, in Union Bridge, and the bank the next day closed the store, and you lost all that. 
Gosh. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I'm telling you, uh, back in those days, I tell you, a lot of people today don't don't believe a lot of the stuff that went on. But you saved the bit. The business actually saved you then, because yeah. your name with your and uh, no, your that, name. That's what I claim. Mm -hmm. Now I claim that. Uh, that, that was one reason why they could never sell the business. Although the business was nothing then. We were only couple, putting couple out thoughts. we were only putting out six or six or six or, the first year we only put out six. I think the next year we went to about twenty. Because they had the four. And you see they didn't they didn't know what a concrete vault was. All they did in those days where they had old bricked up graves or just wooden boxes. Or slate. And uh, some of them, they would dig, dig out so far, then they'd come in and about four inches around, they would dig, that would come in and then you'd put slab over top of that. So and, that and that would hold the graves up. So your dad was actively farming as well. Oh, you yeah. were da dairy farming or yeah. grain farming? The, the dairy farming. We had, uh, well, back in those days, we had 14 cows. That was a big herd of cattle. And today, if you don't have a couple hundred, <laughs> get, get out of the business. But it took a while to milk 14 cows. Oh, yeah, you did it all by hand. He loved the farm. That's why he joined the Navy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was satisfied that I, that, that and I came out of, I came out of the Navy and I told Dad, when I come out of the Navy, I'm going in the vault business. I'm not going on the farm. But I had to be on the farm, working on the farm during the war, so as I would I wouldn't be drafted. And it happened that one day they, uh, we had to bury the president of the draft board's sister and the grave digger went on a drunk and I had to dig the finish digging the grave and he saw me digging it there and he says, he said to the draft board, we got to bury our own dead and he says, this man isn't going to war, isn't going to leave. Then my brother was killed, and then that, that left to, left him have an idea. In other words, then eventually the government came out with a uh, order that if they lost one in the family, they wouldn't they wouldn't draft anybody else. I remember that. I think that's about all the questions that we have time for today. I, 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 can I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, Babylon, what nationality is that? What's that? Babylon, what nationality? Actually, I think on the mother's side, Prussia. we were mostly German. Okay. Prussia. And then on my mother's, on my mother's side, that was all Scotch. So that's in fact, right. there was... Seven boys and a girl came over from Scotland of the Grahams. And one settled around here and some of them settled up around Lancaster. And that's how I got my name Graham. But Babylon is Prussian. Which is Austria now. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. You went to the uh, Babylon building in uh, now that Germany. Babylon. East There's Germany. Germany, yeah. That Babylon was the rich Babylon. Oh. Wait, that no. was Bab Babylon and Lippe. Oh, no, 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 no. We're not talking about that. In Berlin, I went into the museum that had the gates, of, the gates from Babylon. Yeah, but, yeah. but the lady in Kansas City that did it, I think it's, pro I think. I think it's fresh. Mm -hmm. I hope I, I hope I understand everything. Now, I, hope, I, I hope I give, I give you two good things. You did. It's been a wonderful conversation today. We really appreciate the time that we've had with you. Um, 
What part of the country was Prussia? It's part of Germany and Russia and As Austria. It, all the all borders the way, have changed. All in there together. Yeah. <clears throat> Mary Catherine and Graham, we understand your son Guy uh, played keyboard for Elton John. Can you tell us about that? Well, the only thing I can, I can say this, no, the wife can tell you more. <coughs> he played keyboard for Elton John for 20 years. And he was a swimmer, one of the top swimmers of the year on the East Coast. In fact, he, had a, he got a scholarship to college and he went to the University of South Florida. And he, uh, he was in the, uh, he was working out in the Masters swimming. And he was swimming, well, Elton John, you see, he couldn't work out with Elton John, a lot of hotels he went to. They had pools in there, but he couldn't, they couldn't work out. And he, a guy belonged to a swim club in LA and Las Vegas because Elton John played a lot in Las Vegas. Senior uh, man. So that's what he was doing. He was working out the night that he died. He was working out swimming. He was he died of swimming. The heart just gave out. Well, it, was it wasn't yeah. uh, the way I understand it on, on the now this is my interpretation of it. It wasn't his heart. His heart was okay. It's around his heart. The vessels. And that disease, and you see a, an athlete has it. An athlete will drop over dead. That was what happened to God. And, and when it hits you, that's it. And there's no cure for it, and there's no, no warning for it. Spontaneous. Now that's what I understand. Now, whether yeah. that's right, I couldn't say. I'm sure it is. Spontaneous well, cardiac arrhythmia. And, and it had been just a short while before his death that you were able to go down to D.C. to see him perform. We yeah. saw him. He was, um, we saw quite a few of his uh, performances uh, in the area and out of the area. We traveled as far as Durham, North Carolina to see him and Kentucky. And, of course, when we were in Arizona, we saw him a couple times out there. Oh, oh, in, in other words, York, in Germany. Oh, our first time seeing him. Elton John was a good man. Okay, this time. Now, the first time we saw him was in Germany. Yeah. Germany. We were in, in uh, Europe on a tour, and Elton John was playing in Hamburg, and we went up to see it. And we were standing in backstage. Mary and I were standing back there with the rest of the guys. And Elton John came running down, running down the aisle, and he says, "I understand you are, you are parents of God." And we said, "Yes." And he says, "Anything you want here to eat, and go ahead and help yourself." And I said, "I'll, no, I don't know. I'll take a coke." And he, before I could reach down and get it, he had it up and had it open and gave it to me, and then. One time we were in, uh, uh, he was playing in New York in Shea Stadium, and we went we went up to see to see him play up there because it was a big thing, and uh, we were standing outside and Elton walked by and and saw us and said hello, and then one time he played down in uh, in uh, Greensburg, North North Carolina. And we were going that weekend, we were going to Richmond anyway, and down there to, to see another ball company. And we said we'd go down a little early, and we'd go on down to Greensboro and see Guy, and then come back up to Richmond. And we did that, and then we were sitting in there, and, and the, before Guy got around, came around, we got there early, and Elk was there, and he came up to us, and he says, "What are you all doing here?" He recognized that we were out of our territory. But in other words, he recognized mm -hmm. you and everything else. So, and how he got with Elk mm -hmm. was a very uh, 
interesting story. Um, Elton's keyboard player, or not keyboard player, guitar player, had been in a session with guy with working with uh, in a studio with another group, and um, at that time Elton was off with had third operation surgery or something. He was an Australian, but he had called uh, Davy and said, um, uh, "I want to do a benefit." Uh, since I changed my image, uh, I would like to change my sound. I would like another keyboard player. And he wanted uh, a synth player. Huh? He wanted a synth player. A oh. synth player. Synth. Yeah. So well, guy played synthesizers. Yeah. Uh, and guy was uh, keyboards and Elton's piano. Yeah. <clears throat> um, terminology. Right. Uh, <laughs> and. Um, Davy said, I know the person, if he will do it. And he called Guy and said, uh, how would you like to play uh, a benefit with Elton John? It was around July 4th. And uh, Guy, I guess, said yes. And uh, they met Elton and uh, uh, he learned his music over the weekend and played the benefit. And um, Elton called him the next day and thanked him for the, his performance and said, I, I'm going on tour in September and I hope I can have you join my band. I, it was dumb luck being at the right place at the right time. And Elton liked his sound. Uh, Guy did a lot of um, strings. And with with these synthesizers, and he liked the uh, he liked that sound, and um, just one thing led to another, and Elton liked his sound, and then guys started doing a lot of other work for him uh, on a lot of things, and uh, did a lot of his orchestration, and uh, uh, he would uh, write a song and uh, put it on paper and give it to guy and said, "Now clean it up." Which meant Guy would go to it with the, um, he, he, Guy had a studio and all kinds of equipment in it. And he could uh, go through the music and take parts out and sound. Well, over somebody came to his house and worked at Warner's, Warner Brothers. And he said, they, they saw his equipment in there and he says, Warner Brothers doesn't have a, a bit better equipment what he did. And he was very up to date with his uh, with his sound. And as I said it was a, a twenty one years I guess he was with him and um, uh, he uh, really uh, respected Guy and of course uh, our heads got big when he used to introduce him uh, as his genius as genius. Huh? Musical genius. Musical genius. Yeah. Well, the, the funny part, the thing that I liked was the last time that Elton John was in Baltimore since that uh, guy died, he said, oh. and Guy was from, although he lived in LA, LA, he was very much an Oriole fan and a Raven fan, <laughs> and everybody cheered on that. And, and his um, one son uh, became an Oriole fan also. Well, good. Yeah, his, uh, uh, of course, I had a guy, guy's oldest son. Uh -huh. Yeah, he's a royal fan. Good. And, uh, so they have a little part of Maryland still. Well, in. Elton John does an awful lot. He does an awful lot of charity work. I guess I, I just imagine, I just imagine that he does more of any star around. He gives more charity work. I know that uh, there's one thing that he gave um, when Princess Diane died. He had a uh, he sang a song on that, and he said he would never sing it again. But they made a recording, so he said he wouldn't take any money from it. He sold it, and he gave him 32 million. I think 32 million dollars is what the paper said that he turned over to him in one year's time. 
uh, on one of his um, castles, uh, one of his homes or castle, I think it's a castle, they have like a little chapel beside of it, and he put a plaque in the chapel in memory of Guy. And the only two other um, plaques in there is uh, Princess Diane and um, uh, Versace. Uh, Versace. Hmm. No, Donna, was that his name? Johnny, was I? Johnny Versace. Versace. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. who's close from? That he thought that much of Guy. Yeah. That and was Oliver. a special time. Well, that's and good, Oliver. Oliver. That's Oliver. good. Oh, and Oliver, that's uh, a Davy, the guitar player's son. That, that's good that a man of Elton John's statue will give that much money to, to charity. Yes, it is. That's, that's wonderful that the man will do that. And um, as young earth as he is, he came around to the house to see, see uh, uh, Kathy and uh, came in and, you know. And is mentoring Ben. Hmm? He's mentoring Ben. Oh. Yeah. Very good. Very good. So, any other questions? Well, we'd like to thank you again. And it's been a wonderful time.